On the docket tonight, a tragic case out of Utah involving a young couple who was murdered in their own home and really what they were doing, they were protecting their sleeping little children who now don't have a mom and dad. Julie Grant has more. When Tony and Catherine Butterfield put their children to bed on April 18th, 2020, little did they know that time would be the last. This is a case that started with a uh, 911 call that came out to law enforcement in the middle of the night, about 1.15 in the morning. The couple was startled out of bed when a masked intruder broke into their home. So they were able to, both the forensic evidence that they gathered, the ad other additional evidence that they gathered, they were able to identify a suspect. Investigators say the intruder is this man, Albert Johnson, a convicted criminal also known as Psycho Al. Police say at that point, Johnson's motivation was stealing. What the suspect indicated, that uh, he was feeling financial stress. He went to their house uh, knowing that, uh, thinking that they had money to, to get money, basically to rob them. Authorities say Johnson left with $20 and two cell phones, but things escalated when he returned. And once he got to the car, he realized that he had dropped his keys and that he didn't have them. He kicked through the door, and at that point, he didn't have his uh, face mask on. Detectives say Tony Butterfield recognized Johnson, addressing him by name and asking why. Police say the violent attack happened next. Tony was defending himself and his family and Catherine, and he had a knife, and there was a struggle. And at that point, he stabbed Mr. Johnson. And Mr. Johnson uh, says in the, in the statement that he gave to the police that it was very painful and he shot him because he got stabbed by him, but he had the weapon. Officials say Johnson is a convicted felon who was prohibited from possessing a firearm, yet had one that night when he invaded the couple's home. Uh, as he shoots uh, uh, Tony, his wife is also coming to the aid of her husband and he shoots her because, as he says, she's screaming and she won't shut up. Shockingly, the children, ages six, four, and six months, slept through the whole ordeal. There will never be a substitute for that loss, uh, but they have an incredible family structure and network of loving grandparents and aunts and uncles and so forth who have rallied around uh, the lives of these uh, three very young children in this very tragic time. And we have huge news in this case tonight. The defendant, who's also known as, this is his AKA, Psycho Al, that's how he's known back in his hometown in California, has taken a deal. He has pleaded guilty. He has been sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. That's all a good thing, but it's a deal nonetheless, and I, and I want to kind of peel back the layers, get a little more insight. So we need someone who understands how all these things go down, especially out in Utah. Joining us is Greg Scordis, great criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor. Greg, uh, great to have you back on the show. Good to see you again, Vinny. All right, so am I right in describing this as a deal? Was this a deal? Was this a plea deal? A plea bargain, if you would? Oh, no question. And the case moved on a really fast track because, uh, as you articulated earlier, uh, the crime occurred in April of this year. I mean, it hasn't been that long. Um, the defendant was charged with 10 felonies. Um, the first two were what we call aggravated murder, which is our, our death penalty statute, and then eight other felonies that each carry up to 15 years in prison. Uh, he pled guilty to the two aggravated murder counts, the two very serious counts, but he was sentenced immediately. As you know, prob probably, Vinny, uh, when a person pleads guilty, they usually get referred to the probation department and they, they meet with agents there and they decide what the sentence should be. But the judge sentenced him right on the spot to two uh, life in prison without the possibility of parole. So the, the deal, the plea bargain that you just talked about was that they took the death penalty off of the table. Now, is there a sentence in Utah where you can get life with the possibility of parole? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a weird sentence, but our aggravated murder statute, our capital homicide crime, if you will, carries three potential penalties. And, and typically, if you go to trial, the jury decides what the penalty would be. And they can decide uh, life imprisonment with the possibility of parole, life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, or the death penalty. We still uh, have the death penalty here in Utah, as do, I think, two-thirds of the states. So it was a compromise in that, in that uh, Mr. Johnson took the intermediate um, 
uh, cry, intermediate sentence rather, and took the life in prison without the possibility of parole. I would say this, Vinny, our parole board would never have let him out, no matter what, even if he had just taken the, the life with the possibility of parole. I mean, this crime was so violent and so disturbing, and these these couple was so young that he would have never gotten out. But now it's assured that that will occur. He'll never get out. How does uh, this this go down, right? Because you've got a family, right? The victim's family that is now taking care of these three little angels who lost their mom and dad. Um, how much is there a back and forth, a discussion? Do they need to give it their blessings? Uh, I know legally you don't have to, but in, in practice out in Utah, uh, how does that go down? Yeah, and I was a prosecutor for years, and now I do the other side. But certainly the, the district attorney who you heard from in, earlier uh, would have consulted with the victim's family and would have gotten some indication from them as to what they what their desires were. And, and, and as you know, um, because you've been around, uh, sometimes victims will say, look, we don't want to go through the publicity of this. We don't want to go through months of trial, uh, months, years of appeals um, on the chance that they could or couldn't uh, prevail and get a death penalty in a case like this. So let's just take the plea. Let's put this man away forever, ever and ever and be done with it. But that certainly would have been done with the blessing of the, the victim's uh, family, the grandparents, if you will, who probably just said, look, um, and maybe they're not big fans of the death penalty anyway, but they probably said, look, we don't want to put the, the kids. I mean, they were four, two and six months old at the time of the homicide. These were just children, but maybe not wanting to put them through this and just be done with it and, and put this man away forever. Yeah, that's a great point. Because you think about these children are going to grow up, they're going to get older, they're all going to have computers, they're going to find out more about what happened to mom and dad. But I think there'll be less, it'll be less a part of their life, this man, this killer, um, if, it's, if it's done, it's just done. There's not going to be a trial, there's not, like you said, no appeals, this thing isn't going to crop up on them all the time. Maybe uh, it is in the best interest of those children, and, and I think that's what we're all hoping for. Let me just ask you, though, on the other side, uh, Greg, and you do criminal defense now, um, how does that conversation uh, go about where somehow someone is convinced to walk into a courtroom, admit what you did, because he did it, we know he did, but admit what he did and just throw in the towel and say, I, that's it, the rest of my life I'm going to be locked up. With, with no chance of ever, ever getting out. How did, how does, I couldn't imagine, I never did that work, so I couldn't imagine what that conversation could be like. You know, I don't, that would have been a difficult one in this case because um, it's not clear whether the district attorney was really going to seek the death penalty, but he, he confessed. He gave the, the police a complete statement of what happened. Um, and so there was nothing to be gained, I guess, even from his perspective, by going to trial. Um, it, it, it wasn't like the jury was going to acquit him and, and he, would have, he was facing 10 felonies. You can only do so many lives in prison. Um, it, it's it's hard, to, hard to know what happened or why uh, he was convinced because he had really good lawyers. He had two of the finer members of our public defender's office that were representing him, uh, why they convinced him to just be done with it. But it was a pretty airtight case from the district attorney's perspective. And with two with two killings, it, it fits squarely within our death penalty statute. So the district attorney could have said, you know what, we're going to pursue this as a death penalty. It clearly applies under Utah law. And then, um, you know, they could have gone that way. But somehow the they were able to prevail on this guy to just take the plea and be done and, and spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, and I'm glad uh, that he did. And, and hopefully those children, I know the children are in, are in great hands, but it's going to yeah, be difficult like once, once they learn uh, what happened. Greg Scordis, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much. Thanks, Manny. Good to see you again. All right, let's take one more look at um, this case, Utah versus Albert Johnson, a.k.a. Psycho Al. Pleaded guilty October 1st, 2020. Will now be serving life without parole in the Utah State Prison.